In ancient China, there's a legend of Sun Wukong, the Monkey King. Was he a man or was he a myth or was he a monkey? Today we'll attempt to answer these questions and find out the truth behind the ancient Monkey King of China. For generations, humans have been telling stories, tales, and legends about creatures found all around the world. From the griffin to the chupacabra and from the leviathan to the Chinese dragon, it's high time we set out an adventure to learn about them all. This is an expedition for the mythological. Welcome to Mythos Safari. This story, like many, begins in the ancient times of China. One of the biggest and most famous mythological characters to come out of ancient China is none other than the trickster god himself, the Loki of the East, Sun Wukong. Just quickly before we get into this, I'd really appreciate you guys subscribing, turning on the notifications, and becoming a member if you can. It'll go a long way to continue helping me make more videos just like this. So who actually is Sun Wukong? This mythological character is one of the most fearsome, wacky, and mischievous gods to have ever walked the earth. The origin of Sun Wukong is actually not very clear. As most ancient Chinese deities and characters, it's really hard for us to find the exact origin of where they came from. However, some suggest he is closely related to Hanuman in Indian mythology, which makes sense because a lot of the core belief systems of Buddhism come from ancient Hindu beliefs as well. And Sun Wukong has a heavy involvement in Buddhism. Many games, books, and even anime characters have been based on the mythological creature. Just as an example, if you guys have ever watched Dragon Ball Z before, Son Goku was actually based off of Sun Wukong. Well, the most famous stories of Sun Wukong actually come from the ancient tale Journey to the West, and it was told back in 1592 CE. Although it's the most famous reference to Sun Wukong, I want to mention that some references can be found of the Monkey King even before the tale of Journey to the West. So what is Sun Wukong's story? In the story of Journey to the West, Sun Wukong actually was born from a magical rock. The energies of heaven and earth combined to impregnate a boulder. Yes, I, yeah, a, they, they, a boulder. After many centuries, the impregnated boulder laid a stone egg. With the help of all the core elements of the world, earth, fire, wind, and water, they formed the shape of a monkey. The Monkey King then hatches, or is born from the egg, however you want to say it. And then two bright beams shoot out of his eyes, like going Avatar mode in Avatar The Last Airbender. Troubled by these beams of light, the Emperor tried to find what the source was, only to find a baby monkey, who poses no threat to him or his palace. The Monkey King then ventured off and joined another group of monkeys he found in the forest. The group of monkeys were actually playing around in a waterfall, and they decided whoever jumped through the waterfall and came back alive, will be the king of the monkeys. Well, naturally, the Monkey King is the first to jump through the water fearlessly, where he found a cave hidden behind the waterfall. He brought the rest of the monkeys in and then took his rightful position as the handsome Monkey King. After many years that passed, the Monkey King's close friend passed away, leaving him feeling afraid of death. This brought him to his next journey to find a path of immortality. After finding himself at the ends of the world, he found himself in front of the great sages, Puti Jushi's temple. Puti refused at first, but later took the Monkey King under his wing and bestowed him with his new name we all know and love, Sun Wu Kong, which means monkey awakened to the void. In this temple, Puti taught Sun Wu Kong martial arts, magic spells, breathing techniques, and all of these granted him immortality and the 72 earthly transformations. These 72 transformations allowed him to transform into anything ranging from animals to trees or objects. After learning everything from his master, he set off home where he found a demon causing terror in his kingdom. Knowing how strong the demon was, Sun Wukong set himself off to find a weapon. He wanted a weapon to fight from the Dragon King. Initially, the Dragon King turned him away, but after seeing Sun Wukong force himself past his guards, he realized how strong Sun Wukong actually was. The Dragon King then brought him all of the divine weaponry he has. Everything felt too light for Sun Wukong's strength. Sun Wukong then saw a massive pillar called Jingu Bang. He touched it and then magically it shrunk to the perfect size. Before he left, the Dragon King bestowed upon him the Phoenix Feather Cap, magical armor, and cloud walking boots. So now it came time to face the demons. As a trick, Sun Wukong allowed himself to actually get captured by the demons, and they brought him to Yan Wei and the kings of hell. He was able to trick Yan Wang into allowing him to return back to earth without undergoing reincarnation, and he was able to cross his name out of the book of life and death, ultimately gaining another form of immortality. Having been tricked, Yan Wang asked the Jade Emperor for assistance in dealing with Sun Wukong. The Jade Emperor asked Sun Wukong to come to their holy palace, where he would get a great position. After realizing that his job position was just being a stable boy, he released all the horses as a big middle finger to the Jade Emperor, and declared his new title as the Great Sage Equal to Heaven. Sun Wukong even put this on his banner, 
when he returned to the kingdom for all the gods to see. This angered the Jade Emperor, who no longer cared for peace between the monkey and him. He sent out all of his forces to go after Wukong. Wukong overpowered all of them until Erlong Sheng joined the battle. Sun Wukong was finally captured through a magical steel bracelet and a celestial hound, but the Jade Emperor was unable to kill Sun Wukong no matter what method he used. The Jade Emperor then pleaded to Buddha to intervene. Buddha made a deal with the trickster Sun Wukong. If he can land a somersault from the palm of his hand, he could become the new Jade Emperor. Without thinking twice, Sun Wukong leaped high into the air, and when he rose just high enough, he wrote his name in the top of the pillar and took a nice little piss to prove that he was there. And after landing on what felt to him as Buddha's palm, he looked at Buddha and asked for his reward. The Lord Buddha laughed as he said he had to move the one inch from the spot he was in. Sun Wukong looked behind him to see he had never actually jumped from Buddha's hand, and the pillar he thought he rode on was just Buddha's finger, and it kind of looked like he just pissed on Buddha's finger. Buddha banished the Monkey King from the heavens and pinned him underneath a mountain where he was to reflect on his actions for hundreds of years. This story ends 500 years later, when Tang Sanzang found Sun Wukong and offered to release him if he promised to repent and become the disciple of the monk. After being released, Sun Wukong followed Tang's teachings and eventually achieved enlightenment, putting an end to his anger, greed, and trickster habits. Sun Wukong was not only unbeatable but literally could not be killed. It had to take the big Buddha himself to trick the trickster and leave him stuck under a mountain to keep the chaotic monkey at bay. Typically, Sun Wukong is depicted wearing the celestial armor and a staff that he acquired from the Dragon King. The staff is known as Ruji Jingu Bang. It is a magical weapon that can stretch and shrink depending on the user's wishes. When Sun Wukong is not using the staff itself, it is said that he shrinks it to the size of a toothpick and hides it in his ear. The boots he wore were known as cloud walking boots, which allowed him to fly in a cloud and travel thousands of miles with super speed. That might have been familiar to you when in Dragon Ball Z, Goku rode on a cloud when he was very young. This is a very similar depiction to Sun Wukong. The golden chainmail was the armor that Wukong used on his body, and he also had a phoenix feather cap referencing immortality. Sun Wukong could shapeshift into 72 different animals and objects. He had super strength, speed, and he could also use his hair to create clones of himself. This was seen in his fight against the Jade Emperor, which was summoned against him. Sun Wukong is one of the greatest and well-known godly figures in Buddhist and Taoist religions. He's not really worshipped as a god or other deities, however his story is told in many different ways and is used in many different games, movies, and stories. It's interesting to analyze the relationship that ancient Chinese people probably had with the monkeys in the forest and jungles around them. When you look at the spirit and behavior of Sun Wukong, it very much represents modern monkeys and the ancient monkeys that human beings probably had to live side by side with. Monkeys are known to be mischievous, clever, intelligent, and unpredictable animals. That's why we find so much similarity in them when we look at them, as they feel like little human beings. But in reality, they have this animalistic primal element to them. But throughout all their intelligent and all their smarts, there's still that monkey, that animal behind those eyes. And although I'm not a big fan of monkeys in general, I do really like this character. He's literally the embodiment of arrogance. It's like as if somebody said, oh, you don't think I'm the greatest? Well, let me show you how I am. I had a lot of fun researching the story of Sun Wukong, and there's so much more about Sun Wukong. This is just the main story. I'd like to hear from you what mythological creature you'd like to see me cover next. Please join the channel and subscribe because it'll go a long way to helping us create more amazing videos just like this. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.